earlier ability system was created partially with four different programmers and it was pulled together as a group effort but not with enough consistency so the outcome that looked earlier to be just fine was showing some vulnerabilities later on down the line. The operations and the whole model was a little bit unclear. We also noticed that we had pumped way too many parts of the feature into too small space which caused a lot of chances for mishaps and errors. We, uh, we had issues with the ability system or rather we didn't really have issues but it was getting so convoluted, uh, so complex that it was impossible to maintain, it was impossible to add new features. So we made the decision to scrap it for a better solution. We had to redo it all and we had to design and figure out how we would like to uh, change it into more usable uh, structure. We had to figure out what needs did we have for the ability system. So when we were wondering what the problem was with the old design, we made a made this flowchart for it to uh, sort of visualize the problem points. And as you can see, the whole left side is a total mess of logic going everywhere. This blue strings are basically signals that are fired from pieces of logic and if we just left it as it is we would have all sorts of problems in the long run like people missing their turns and in general things going wrong in ways that are really hard to find or debug so we decided to scrap this model the solution that came from fixing this problem was basically to separate the different functions into their own and not trying to do too much in within one uh, one block of code and this made it uh, possible to make it more clear so all the programmers who are working with it can e more easily see how it is used and what's the function of each of these uh, core functions is. So we scrapped the old complicated system and replaced it with this simple linear process of evaluating, executing and visualizing the ability usage. All three parts of the new system work completely separately and don't really rely on each other. So we can just use the evaluation and execution and skip the visualization or we can just evaluate and use that information for something. Or we can just use pre-evaluated abilities and execute those. It, it's really flexible, it allows us to do all sorts of things that were impossible before. And when I say evaluation, I basically mean that we take an ability and provide it with the information it needs, like who's using the ability, who is it targeting, and what kind of field conditions are there. Is, is it a backstab? Is the guy far away from the other guy? So on, so on. And based on that, we get evaluated ability that basically just says, is it going to succeed? Is it going to work? Uh, is it, is it going to heal this person? Is it going to damage this person? Is it going to give him debuffs, buffs? basically just gives us all the effects of the ability based on these conditions. So this leaves us with a really simple problem for the execution itself. It just needs to be able to take an evaluated ability and actually make those changes on the warriors and that's all there is to it. And that leaves us with just the visualization which is also really simple to do with this evaluated ability because we only have to do like we did in the execution and go through all the changes this evaluated ability would do on a warrior and visualize them somehow. The new ability system is giving us now multiple tools for where we only had one earlier on. This system also future-proofs us because when we eventually get to work on the AI and replace and things like that, we can simply leave out the visualization part, for example, and just run the game simulation without the actual uh, visual client. So we can run simulated battles to train AIs, or we can simply play replays without actually running game logic by simply doing the visualization and leaving everything else out, so it really opens up possibilities for us.